Welcome to the Talent Optimization Podcast, the go-to podcast for CEOs and HR professionals wanting to bridge the gap between the strategy and tactical implementation of talent optimization within their organizations. Through interviews, predictive index, and personal experience, your host, Tracy Shirk, helps you discover the facets of talent optimization from both a CEO and HR perspective to truly create the dream team for your organization. Are you ready? Let's get started. Welcome to Talent Optimization. Today, we are chatting about how we create a coaching culture inside of our organizations. And as many of you know, I've been on a journey to get my coaching certification over the last year and have come across some of the most amazing individuals that have really implemented coaching cultures inside of organizations, coached executives, et cetera. And I'm thrilled to have a guest with us on the show today in Bobby Sue. And Bobby Sue is an executive coach and also has her own coaching practice at Rosewood. So Bobby Sue, welcome to the show. Well, thank you so much, Tracy. It's very good to be here with you. Absolutely. And so I'm just super curious, what was your journey to coaching and why is coaching so important inside of organizations? Well, that is a great question and a roundabout way, maybe like your journey, but I really started off as an accountant working with organizations as a consultant because I had my own accounting business. And there was lots of organizations that I just knew their culture was bad, wrong. I didn't know how to define it. It didn't feel very comfortable there. And just as my interest in business grew, like you, I found College of Executive Coaching 15 years ago and went through the program and just loved it, which kind of just shifted my point of view. So now I work with College of Executive Coaching, how I met you. And my business has grown to where I get to work with organizations all over the world, which just sort of blows my mind. And I love it. And then it's really, I think the coaching culture really under, it's really talking about emotional intelligence in the workplace, really about conversation. And it's really about, for leaders, asking and not telling. I remember Peter Drucker many years ago said, the leader of the future will ask and not tell. So it's really allowing your people, your employees, to for them to think for themselves. It's a coaching culture. It helps build the critical thinking skills of the employees. For example, when an employee comes to you, go, hey, boss, how do you do such and such? Instead of just telling them, responding with, what do you think? You've worked here a while. What would your thoughts be? And it may not be perfect, but now you have an engaged employee, someone who realizes they're being appreciated and they're being asked, and they're starting to learn and be more engaged. So it's really a win-win for all the way around. Absolutely. And You know, as I hear you talk about this, I have this kind of like little voice in my head of some of our listeners going, yeah, but there's not always time for that. So like, when is the place for that? And when is the place not for that? Because there is something beautiful about timing. Absolutely. And I'm not asking anyone to do that all the time. I'm a coach. You're a coach. We do that in coaching. However, when you have the time to spend a little extra time with your employees, challenging them, helping them use the things they've learned. But without a doubt, leadership has to make quick decisions. There's a time when a democratic process will not work. There's a time when you have to tell, you cannot ask. And But I think it's for our leaders to have all those tools available to them. And so they know when they have the time, when they can help build up their employees by really coaching them and asking them and helping them through the process of discovering how to reach their goals, how to figure out the issues, solve the problems on their own, as opposed to always having to go to the boss and ask. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that also is something that when you do that, it creates an environment where, you know, one person isn't just the bottleneck. We have something in our organization and we've implemented this in many other organizations as well which we call the question list, right? Which is any question you have before you go directly to your manager, your supervisor, or whoever that is, put it on the question list. But then you have to answer the question 
that you asked before it goes to the supervisor or whatnot, that then becomes quite honestly the FAQs for any other employee. So any employee can go look at the question list if they have a question to see if it's there already. And we use that in our orientation. We use that in our training. It becomes a part of our SOPs, but it also allows as that supervisor or leader us to see the thought process of the employees and what their thought process is. The best part about it is more than half the time, their ideas are better than what mine would have ever been. (laughs) I'm sure you're being humble, but you make me think back when as a kid, like asking my mom what the the definition of a word was and she goes, look it up in a dictionary. And you're like, no, you know, just give me the information. I thought one thing that might be fun, Tracy, is to teach your listeners the good model. What we learned at College of Executive Coaching. Okay. I Um, think that'd be fantastic. Okay. So for all you listeners, Tracy and I have learned coaching the same way. And of course, this is just a model created by Jeff Arbach. And like all all models, it doesn't work perfectly for every single coaching, but it really does kind of provide the avenue because I think most of us, it's really easy to want to jump in and give advice. So for example, it's called the good model and the good stands for goal, option, obstacle, and do. Mm -hmm. And how it plays out is imagine your employee comes to you with a goal in mind or a question in mind or something that they want to do. That is their goal. And instead of just giving them the answer, just ask, what are your opportunities? What are your options? Second O. And stop there. Like, and what else? What else? Help kind of excavate what's in them, the knowledge that's in them. And then move on to the next. What's going to get in the way? What's the obstacle? Why won't you follow through? Because one of the reasons we don't reach our goals is we don't adequately look at what might get in the way because something always gets in the way. It could be an obstacle. It could be a distraction, but something always sort of hinders it. And by talking about it with our employees or with our clients, whatever, when that happens, they're more likely to to find their way around the problem. And then what are you going to do? With all this knowledge, what are you going to do differently? Or what are you going to do? And so that is just a basic coaching model that your listeners can begin using right away. Yeah, absolutely. And what I love so much about that model is those options that you come up with, you know, there can be so many of them. And I know we didn't prep for this, but do we want to do a quick example? (laughs) Of this, okay. of what the good model is. <laughs> yes, you want to be the coach or the client? I can be the client. Now I just have to come up with something fun, right? Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, so so something fun may be, you know, we are launching our group program for HR professionals. It's our group coaching program. It's a three-month program. And with that, our goal is that a new one launches every month and that we have 12 new clients in that. So that's our goal. So let me make sure I have this right. The goal is to set up this program that's going to begin every month and you're adding in new employees into it monthly. Is that correct? Yep. So 12 HR professionals every month that are in this group coaching program. That's fantastic. Why is this goal meaningful to you? So the reason why this goal is so incredibly meaningful to me is as an HR professional, I had this kind of... I had to coach others, but I didn't know what coaching was. I never had experienced what coaching was. And yet I'm talking and coaching with employees all day long, but without experiencing what coaching really is, it's really difficult to be that key person for employees inside your organization. And so it's powerful to me because I want to give other HR professionals that experience of being coached in a way that furthers their personal and professional development, but also furthers their organization because it's amazing. And let me ask you one more question about your goal. What will be different for you or your organization once you've achieved this goal? Yeah, so what will be different for us in our organization is that we will be able to not only serve clients in a consulting model, but also really serving them in that coaching model. Because so often we have clients that we've been serving and consulting that really don't need that consulting anymore. What they really need is the coaching. So it allows us to continue that journey with them to further their development. That is exciting. So what are your opportunities that you have to create this goal, to make it happen, to make it come alive? 
Yeah. So I think that there's a number of opportunities. And of course, I'm going to jump to an obstacle first, right? The biggest obstacle is the time just to put that out and say, okay, here's when we're going to do it. And then marketing it in a way that really gets it in front of individuals and excited about it. So what are some options that you can get that information in front of people so they get excited about it? The podcast we're doing right now, which is totally, you know, okay, by the seat of our pants. You know, and then the other is is just that outreach and asking. And that's something that I haven't yet done either. Uh, let's see. Anything else? Let's dig a little deeper. What else might be in there? So I can send emails through our email system. I can do outreach. I can talk about it in the speaking programs that I have coming up. Anything else you can think of? I could reach out to the individuals that I've already coached in the HR community and, and ask them, A, if they want to rejoin this session or who else they would recommend that they feel that this would be a good fit for. I love that you started off with one the podcast and now you have about five different options. Had to be more time. I would just keep at that till we, we drain everything inside of you. So you have a list of things you can do. And you did list one obstacle. And But is there anything else other than time? I think the other obstacle that's coming up for me is I already have laid out, here's exactly what this looks like in a three-month program. So like the programmatic aspects of it are all laid out, but yet it's going, hey, is this going to be the right thing for each person that's inside of it? And I think that this is where I get caught between coaching and consulting, right? Because consulting really is everything's laid out and coaching is your coachees really lead that. And that's, I think, something that sometimes I think we all get hung up on as we're coaching. So what can you do to make sure you are meeting the needs of the people in the program? Oh, we've got the questionnaires to begin with. We follow up after every session and ask them what they needed and what they want more of the next time. And I think it's just following what's been laid out for them. And what are you going to do? When's this going to happen? (laughs) So what I'm going to do is... In our show notes, after the end of this episode, we will have, there will be a link for how to sign up for that coaching that we'll be starting. And we will start the first one in March. So that will be in the show notes. And then also I will go back and look at the draft emails that I've you know started and finalize that to send out to those folks that we've worked with in the past and that are on our list. Well, thank you. That is an example of the good model. Clearly, you had your goal. You pretty much had all of this in place. But I hope your listeners can see and and practice. Use it on somebody. Use it on themselves. Just thinking, going through that process of helping people come up with the ideas and the solutions and the motivation. As you were talking about it, your energy rose. You Mm -hmm. got excited listening to you just talk about it. But that is really exciting. Absolutely. And for our listeners too, you know, one of the things I really want you to think about is what is coaching, right? So we just gave you a really great example of a coaching conversation. And it's very different than a consulting conversation, which is really telling, right? Or leading. Well, I think, Tracy, you have so much expertise in this world. May I ask you, what is your definition of a coaching culture? Because you live, breathe this world more than I do. Oh, absolutely. So, you know, our definition of a coaching culture, and I don't have this written out anywhere. So, you know, but that coaching culture is really about leading individuals in the way that they need to be led so that they're fulfilled in their work and meeting the business outcomes, right? And so that that culture is this give take that is, you know what, we're working together, but it truly is letting every single person's strengths shine in a way that aligns with the job, with the team, with the organization, and with that leader. Because guess what? We don't have all the answers, nor should we. And it's really about utilizing and elevating every single person's strength to meet what those business outcomes are. I love that. And for the listeners, if you're not quite sure how to do that, I know in coaching, we always will say, dial up your curiosity. Ask. You don't have to know it. You don't, nobody's expecting any listener, leader to know everything by just automatically. But if you're curious, talk to your employees, ask them what that would be helpful for them, what they might need to be a better employee, to be more engaged. Be curious and just be open to the response you get once you ask those questions. Absolutely. And so as we start to kind of close out this amazing conversation, Bobby Sue, and thank you so much 
One of the questions that I have for you is what is the takeaway that you have for executives that have listened in today? Well, I'm not a mind reader, but I can tell you what I hope. I hope (laughs) that the executives listening in today, that they just ponder a little bit about what a coaching culture would look like for their organization. And there's not a one size fits all. I always heard one size fits all fits none. So mm-hmm. this is a one conversation and there's a there's books out there, but to actually, I challenge each person to this coming day, whenever you listen to this later today or tomorrow, ask open-ended questions. Don't tell, ask, be curious, just experiment a little bit. And I promise you, oh, one sidebar, here's a good start. Barbara Fredrickson does work on positivity in the workplace. And her research says for any negative criticism or like telling your employee they did something wrong, you should give them three things they have done right. And that's not many people I know do that, meaning I'm going to look around and find specific things my employees are doing and not just say good job, but say like, Tracy, you do this excellent podcast every week after week after week. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And what happens is you are getting this employee motivated. They 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 feel seen, they know they're heard, they know they're appreciated. And it's three to one. It's not, there's no room for criticism. And just for the the second side of this conversation at home, it's five to one. So all of us need to dial up looking for things that are working because our brain is wired to find what we look for. So if we're only looking for problems, David Cooperwriter says, if we only find problems, we have a problem organization. So I also challenge all the leaders to really look and discover for all the things that are working and make sure that you appreciate and acknowledge the things that are working. Absolutely. And that was beautiful. And I love how you both brought in work and home, right? Because guess what? It is the same pot of soup. Take home with us, we bring to work. And I think we've learned this so much in the last two years. And as we you know, talk with our HR professionals that are listening in, what's one takeaway that you have for them? Keep doing your magic work. You guys have such a tough job of dealing with emotions on all levels. And I sometimes wonder, well, I say, who listens to you? But Tracy does. (laughs) So that's why you, (laughs) that's why they have you. Cause you have, I'm not HR. My background's accounting is the power and influence you all have on the people around you is not to be taken lightly or taken for granted. You have the opportunity to make someone's day every day. And even when it's bad news, you can do it in a way that's respectful and kind, that people always have their dignity about them and are always encouraged. And you all have that opportunity to do that. I love it. I love it. I love it. So if you are interested in experiencing what coaching is, I hope that you will check out the coaching programs that we have at Elevated Talent Consulting that are coming up. And if you're an executive that's listening in and you're looking for an executive coach, I really hope that you take a look at Bobby Sue and the work that she does because she's phenomenal. So with that being said, thank you so much for joining us in this episode of Talent Optimization. And I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Talent Optimization Podcast. You'll find more tools and resources for CEOs and HR professionals looking to bridge the strategies versus implementation gap of talent optimization at elevatedtalentconsulting.com. We've also created a free, valuable resource for you to begin bridging the gap called the Talent Optimization Foundation Membership Program. You can access it for free at elevatedtalentconsulting.com forward slash foundation. Be sure to tune in next week for another episode to learn more about talent optimization and creating a dream team for your organization.